Welcome to the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast, presented by the Beef Cattle Research Council. The most popular content from beefresearch.ca, available on the go. Before we get into today's episode, a quick message from the BCRC. Research has demonstrated that beef cattle have increased performance when provided with a consistent high quality water source. Benefits include increased weight gain, improved herd health and reproductive performance, safer watering sites, increased longevity of the water source and improved pasture utilization. For producers interested in installing a new watering system, several factors should be considered, including the water source, time of year, water capacity required, and location. The BCRC's watering system calculator is a useful tool producers can use to estimate the economics associated with installing a new pumped watering system based on their unique situation. A link to the calculator can be found in the show notes. This episode is titled, Understanding the 5 W's of Cattle Injections. Who, what, when, where, and why. Over the past two decades, great strides have been made in standardizing beef cattle injection techniques and methods. Today, there are animal injection best practices that have become widely known in the beef industry as just the right thing to do. These cattle injection techniques are recommended to help farmers produce safe beef for the consumer and maintain Canada's high reputation for beef quality. The best practices for injecting beef cattle are number one, securely restrain the animal. Number two, use the appropriate size and length of needle. Number three, use the subcutaneous route whenever the product label allows. Number four, only inject 10 milliliters cc maximum into any one site or as per label. Number five, change needles when bent or dull and after every 10 to 15 uses. Number six, never straighten or reuse a bent needle. Number seven, leave a hand width of space between injections. And number eight, never inject in the armpit of the animal. The route of administration, or ROA, is the route in which a drug is taken into the body which can be subcutaneous, intramuscular, oral, intravenous, topical, or intranasal. When label recommendations are followed, a beef animal's ability to absorb, distribute, break down, and excrete a drug are predictable. It is when those label directions are not followed that we run into concerns. There are distinct differences in the rate of absorption of drugs depending on how they are delivered and if the product is given incorrectly there is no guarantee that the drug will be effective. Incorrect ROA would lead to underdosing, which is an animal welfare and production concern when a therapeutic level may not be achieved. This will leave the cattle vulnerable to the disease being treated or prevented. Underdosing is also a concern from an antibiotic stewardship standpoint, as chronically underdosing antimicrobial drugs can lead to resistance. The ROA also determines a beef animal's ability to eliminate the product, affecting withdrawal recommendations and potentially leading to drug residues being detected in meat. Subcutaneous injections, sub-Q or SQ, are placed just under the skin, as opposed to an intramuscular injection where the medication is placed directly into the muscle. Subcutaneous injections are generally less irritating and are the preferred ROA. Pharmaceutical companies are continually updating products and labels, so become familiar with the current label recommendations and use the subcutaneous route whenever possible. The recommended maximum volume per injection site is 10 milliliters cc. Increasing the volume of medication injected into one location will impede a beef animal's ability to absorb and excrete the medication. In addition, an increased volume can lead to a pocket of unabsorbed medication being left in the tissue. This decreases the efficacy of the treatment and could also be detected as drug residue in the carcass of a beef animal. A lower volume injection also ensures that the tissue can effectively recover from the irritation of the medication, decreasing the chances of an animal developing an injection site lesion. Injection site lesions, ISL, cost the beef industry 56 cents per head in 2016, compared to 21 cents per head in 2011 due to a higher prevalence rate. Only inject beef animals in the recommended safe zone on the neck, 
never in the rump or loin. This ensures that if the animal has a reaction to the product and develops a lesion, it can easily be trimmed away from the less valuable chuck rather than damaging the more valuable round cuts. Injecting outside of the safe zone in the neck can potentially cause injury and even death to the animal being treated. The nuchal ligament is responsible for supporting the head of a beef animal, and if it is damaged via an injection, that animal can suffer severe and permanent paralysis. The same result can occur if the spinal cord is inadvertently hit. The jugular furrow contains the jugular vein and the carotid artery. If medications are mistakenly injected directly into the bloodstream, animals may suffer severe drug reactions. A hand width of space between medication injections will ensure the tissue can adequately recover from the injection and prevent medications from commingling. If medications mix within the animal, they can interact and cause drug reactions or even inactivate each other, rendering them useless. Along with injecting into the recommended safe zone, choosing the appropriate needle size helps ensure that the product can be delivered while using minimum disruption of the tissue. Always choose the smallest gauge needle that can still effectively deliver the type of medication needed. Disposable needles with an aluminum hub rather than plastic are preferred. It is also necessary to keep equipment clean and in good working order to prevent tissue trauma and the possibility of localized abscesses. Never inject through a dirty hide, which will only drag bacteria and debris into the tissue and create a perfect environment for abscesses. Bird, bent, or dull needles will also increase the likelihood of damage and abscessing. This can be prevented by using a quality disposable needle that can be changed any time damage is evident, every 10 to 15 injections, and every time you enter a multi-dose vial. Lastly, cattle that are not properly restrained are more likely to suffer from tissue trauma, incorrect injection technique and location, and are at a higher risk for needle breaks. Ensure that all animals being treated are safely restrained in a chute that allows the processor easy access to the neck and prevents unnecessary movement in the animal being treated. A little knowledge goes a long way, and understanding the reasoning behind each recommendation can help install accountability and ensure producers are diligent in the day-to-day -day tasks involved in raising cattle for food. Little things done right every day safeguard food quality and ensure Canadian food safety remains at a high standard. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can find all relevant links and information at beefresearch.ca or in the show notes. The Beef Cattle Research Council is funded by the Canadian Beef Cattle Checkoff and strives for excellence in the production of Canadian beef, cattle, and forage through research, innovation, and extension. Tune in every Tuesday as the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast delivers straightforward insights, expert information, and a wealth of practical knowledge for Canadian beef producers. Subscribe now.